welcome you to Friendship Baptist Church. We praise God for everybody that's here tonight. We're sure glad that you're here, because I know he's here. And uh, we're going to have a good time tonight as we look at God's Word. We're going to go to 1 Samuel, chapter 4. We were there yesterday, last week, we were at chapter 3. We looked at Samuel's uh, time of when, when he was called of God, just as all of us were called of God at one time. You know, when you got saved, you didn't just get saved, but you were given an office. You were given a, 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 some gifts. And uh, and I, I believe that God can also, at any time in your life, give you a new gift. If he wants to, you know, he will. Uh, sometimes it'll give you gifts that, that you haven't discovered yet. You know why you haven't discovered it? Because you haven't used that gift. Uh, the people who really know what their gifts are are people who are really busy in the church. And if God tells you, hey, there's something over there that needs to be done, go over there and be surprised uh, how God will use you. But anyway, we, got, we saw the calling. He was called to be uh, the, uh, the judge in Israel. And just a little guy. What did I say he was? 11 years old at that time? Wow. And uh, tonight we're going to go a few years later uh, to, uh, to, um, to chapter 4. By this time, he is well known as a judge. So let's open up with prayer, okay? Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for this time that we have together. We thank you for your presence in our life. And uh, Lord, we pray, for our, we, we pray for our families. We pray for our church. We pray for our nation. And we pray for the world, Lord, that it might be evangelized. And that many, many millions of people, really, Lord, we would, I know you, have told us, and we agree with you, that it's billions that you want. You want, you want, you want everybody, bro. Uh, you, all, all of us, Lord. And, uh, but Lord, uh, I know that we have hearts that are evil, and uh, we have uh, lusts uh, that are uh, 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 wrong. So we ask, Lord, that you would bless us, and encourage us, and help us to take on your nature, and, uh, and, your, and let us uh, obey your will in our life. We thank you for this. And tonight, Lord, we pray uh, again uh, for those who are traveling that they get here safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we back first Samuel. And Samuel was that wonderful judge whose privilege it was to uh, be the last judge. He, he, was, he ended up judging for 40 years. And... Uh, but we saw his start last week as a young 11-year-old boy called by God to be the judge. And now, uh, in, in verse 1a, uh, it says that, uh, that Israel knew him, knew him. They heard his word, and the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now, it's kind of interesting because he's not the judge yet. But you see, what happens is uh, God, when he sees immorality in the leadership, he'll often, he'll, he'll take the mantle of leadership off of one and put it on another. Samuel would have, in his career, he would have the job of anointing the first king, Saul, and then later, anointing the second king, David, while Saul was still the king. You know, we kind of see that here. The, uh, the Lord's anointed right now. Of course, it, it, of course um, Eli is, uh, is an old man. I said last week that he was 98 years old. Well, really, he was a little younger than that because this is a few years later. He's still 98, so he can't be 98 all that time. So really, he was probably 91 or so uh, last week when Eli, when, um, when Samuel was, uh, was appointed by God given that task. Now he's 98 years old. And, uh, and uh, Samuel is the, the one that the people are looking to. Samuel, uh, a great deal, because he's not only, not only is he a judge, but he's a prophet. But what he says will happen. It's, it's sort of like uh, this morning when we, we heard Joshua. You know, if what he said was prophecy that would come true. When he got through with, uh, with, with uh, well, uh, conquering uh, the city this morning, Jericho, um, he, he put, a put a curse on anybody who was 
shot that, that, that again, uh, shot up that city again, would be cursed. And, and someone did that hundreds of years later, and they were cursed. So, um, uh, so, so Samuel recognized that way. But there's a real problem with Israel because it's immorality. And the people are immoral. The people um, have gotten away from God. It's no longer a hot religion. See, so yeah, that's one of the problems that, that you have sometimes with, with uh, even your big denominations. You have to be very careful that they don't become so ritualistic that it's idolatry. You understand what I'm saying? The Ark of the Covenant now represented God, but it was almost idolatry. It was almost like they worshipped the Ark instead of the God who lived within it, the presence of God. It was like, it was, it was like we have the Ark with us, but you see, that was completely wrong. Remember when, when, the, when, when in, in this morning when when Joshua had the ark carried around the city. Uh, but the people were required um, first to dedicate themselves to God, not to the ark, but to God. And, and, and they were circumcised to God. It was a hot religion. Then they had to, they had to come out in, in their millions, men, women, and children, and follow the ark. The ark was simply a symbol, but, but God is God. And, and he is omniscient, and he is a spirit. So he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. So he's just not in that little, it's, it's not a, 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 a thing of idolatry. So that's what we're going to see in this chapter. We're going to see the ark kind of using as an idol, not only by Israel, um, but also by the Israel's enemies. They, 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 they kind of, they, they become such a symbol that it's an idol to them. We have to be very careful that we don't um, put other things on the throne besides God. Uh, we shouldn't Worship angels, for instance. You know, that, that's, that isn't right. We'd be very, very careful of what we do. Certainly we don't want to worship uh, uh, a symbol of the cross, of the cross. You don't worship the cross. You worship, you worship Christ. That's, what, you know, that's why we, we as uh, Baptists, we don't usually uh, put, this, put, put, put Christ on the cross when we, in our churches, etc. We just put a blank cross. Why? Because we don't want that to be an idol. You know, we worship... God in heaven, and we worship Christ, and we know the Holy Spirit lives within us. So that's the problem here. Um, uh, we have um, Hophni and Phineas are pretty much taken over. Some, some believe, some, some redactors of the Bible believe that at this time Eli had really retired, and Phineas was really the high priest, and Eli was just there, you know, stealing and doing all the, uh, with, in the immoral things with his brother, but the, the one who seemed to be holding the office was Phineas. Um, Eli, of course, is 98 years old, you know. And so, um, now, and the word of Samuel came to all of Israel. Now, Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and, and, and pitched beside Eden, uh, Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Abraham. So there they are against their enemies, the Philistines. And uh, here's the problem. The Philistines have no chance, and they know they have no chance, against Israel. When Israel is unified and dedicated 100% to their God. Now, Israel without their God is just like any other people. They're, they're just defenseless. You know? they, 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 uh, they're just as good, perhaps, as their swords are shot because they don't have God with them. And that's what you have here. You have Israel coming out, and they're idolatrous, and they're, uh, they're, they're, they're filled with ignorance, and their leadership is very bad and spiritually poor. Even Eli is, well, the, the charge that, is, that, that we see in the scripture is that Eli didn't correct his sons, because his sons were evil. They did, they did immoral things uh, inside uh, the, uh, the sanctuary. Shiloh, they were, they were evil. They turned the Shiloh sanctuary into a place of evil and greed. Um, but it, there seems to be a, uh, an, an influence, it's sort of an uh, uh, indication that maybe Eli more than just uh, went along with it. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe he was even uh, a guilty son, but not as much as his sons, but still guilty. But he did, he did, he was one by God and corrected, but he, he, uh, uh, he did not, he was not a good father, he did not correct uh, his son, he allowed the evil 
to affect all of Israel. And now Israel is far from God. So Israel is going to take a terrible toll. A terrible toll. So the Philistines split themselves in an army against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew the army of, of the field about 4,000 men. <laughs> you know, that's, not, that's not a small thing. 4,000 uh, Israelites killed you know, by the sword. And when the people were come to the camp, uh, the elders of Israel sa said, Wherever hath the Lord spitten us uh, before the Philistines, let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when we come it before us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. Now that's the wrong answer. That's the wrong answer. The answer is, let us get on our knees. Let, let us, let us um, fast and pray. And, and, and do uh, obeisance to God and tell him how, how sorry we are and, 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 and repent and change our ways, give up the evil, the, uh, the, the greed and, and, and the, uh, uh, the lust of, of, of uh, the flesh, give it up and come back to God. But that's not what they did. Let's go get the ark. The ark, that's what it is. Remember the ark was carried across the Red Sea. The ark, the ark was what was, 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 was carried, well, well, um, uh, well, 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 it wasn't carried across the Red Sea, no, because it wasn't built yet, but it was carried across the Jordan. Uh, the ark was, was a symbol of, of the very presence that God dwells there. This will give us victory. We always have victory. So let's go get the ark. And that's what they do. They run off and they get the ark. And uh, so the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring uh, uh, forth the ark of the covenant of the Lord, of the host, which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli. Now think about this. They have statues of angels. But I'm going to tell you something. They have Hophni and Phineas, these two sinners that are already judged. Remember, remember the people of, of, of Jericho this morning? And God told Joshua, they're judged. They are unclean. They're the unclean thing. The people are the unclean thing. They handle everything. Everything that you do with them is unclean. Well, here, Hophni and Phineas are carrying the Ark of the Covenant to the war like it's an idol. When we get this idol there, the people will, uh, will, will be defeated. And the presence of God is gone. The glory of God is not there. Now I'm going to show you that in this, in this chapter. They're, they're going out, and this is empty now. Okay? The presence of God is not with them. He's not with them. Now, they're, 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 certainly he, he's, he's everywhere. He knows everything. And he's going to use the Ark of the Covenant as, as, as quite a symbol, but, but this is not going to help the people of Israel because it's an idol. It's become an idol. And so uh, when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so the earth rang out. My friends, I know, I'm going to tell you something. You don't pray it. You feel God in your heart, don't you? When you get on your knees, God is present. You don't have to uh, be in the sanctuary. When you leave here, the church, this is an empty building. <laughs> Just let me tell you something. Uh, God is with you. you. You come in, you have, now I, I know His presence is here, but when you go out, God's presence is in you. You are, the, you, you are uh, 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 God's hands. You are God's feet. You are God's uh, tongue. You, you, you do the work of, uh, of Christ. These people think that when you bring uh, the, the ark, it's like, it's like building a church, you know, uh, that, 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 that uh, without the presence of God, it's not going to help you at all. And so they go in there and they think, now we've got the victory. And, and, the, and the Philistines, they look at it and say, oh no, we're undone. And, the, and they're always going to tell them, no, no, we're going to fight, fight hard, fight the best you can do. But we know that it's useless because because this is the Ark of the Covenant, the symbol of, uh, of their gods with an S. They're many, they, they don't even understand it. They have many gods. And to them, the Israel has their, have their gods, and this is the symbol. It's for the idol. They don't understand it. Uh, and, and so the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, and they said, Oh, what meaneth the noise of the great shout of the camps of the, of the Hebrews? And they understood that the Ark of the Lord was coming to the camp. And the Philistines were afraid. You remember this morning? Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the people uh, of Jericho 
were terrified, but they had something to be terrified about because outside their walls was a million Israelites and they were all 100% dedicated and unified to God. And God's presence was upon them. God already told them, you have the victory. They had gotten on their knees. They had prayed. You know, even before they came across the river, they, they had dedicated their lives. Then they were, then they were circumcised. And, 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 and they were totally dedicated. They were completely obedient. They were walking in the Spirit. The Israelites are not walking in the Spirit. They're confused. They're so confused. My friends, people say we're not a Christian nation anymore. And yet, you know, most Americans have been baptized with some, in, in a, you know, they, if you ask them what church they go to, they, they say, I'm a Baptist or I'm a Methodist or I'm a Catholic. They may not go to those churches, but they have that name. You know what I mean? That name. They don't even bother to nowadays to even get married in the churches. They, they want to get married out in the fields, you know, in the barns. I'm not saying it's the wrong thing, but I sure wish more of them wanted to be married in the church, you know. And we've, we've gotten away from God, but, but, but we have to have God in our heart. I mean, that's okay. That's, that's still good out there as long as they have God in their heart, right? They have to have God in their heart. And, but these people, um, they, uh, they're probably worshiping on the high places to idols as well. Because this is not the generation that, that, that Joshua brought across the Jordan. This is a new generation. And every generation has to, and sometimes they go through, look, just look at what, if we are, if I'm right and, and we are spiritual Israel, look what happens to spiritual Israel. They are beaten down, well, well, not spiritual, to Israel. The new generation, when they get away from God, they are beaten down, they are conquered, they are enslaved, uh, they, you know, they're, 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 their crops are taken away from them year after year until they finally get on their knees and cry out to God, each one, cry out to God, God, I'm sorry, forgive me for my sins. And then they unify behind a, a, a godly leader that God has, has chosen, and they would then go out, and that generation, for that whole generation, was saved. They'd win, they'd be free, they, they could keep their crops, their children were saved, everything was good until the next generation came along. And that went on for 400 years. Well, we're a lot like Israel. We need to get God uh, back into our uh, into our homes. Quite frankly, we need to get God back into a lot of our churches. And we've got to get, yeah, a heartfelt God. We've got to get a heartfelt worship of God back into our country so that we really are a Christian nation. Because I think we still are. But it's not here. And God wants us. He's reminded us through all the, the, the trials and tribulations. You say, what's God doing? Don't shake your fist at God. You say, what are we doing? What are we doing? 30,000 Israelites die. They are meat for the slaughter, the Philistines. They don't have a chance because they don't have God with them. And they lose die bloody death. Phineas and Hophni, they die. Eli has a message to come to him, and here's what happened. Eli falls back with 98 years old. He dies with a broken heart, a broken neck, whatever. He dies. He had his, Phineas' his wife, she's pregnant with a child. She hears what happened. She gives birth to the child. She, she gets so upset she gives birth, and then she dies. Curse, the curse has begun because there was a great curse on that family. And they would go on being priests. That family would go on being priests. But you can see uh, uh, the, uh, the curse being fulfilled in that family that, that, that God had pronounced to Eli. He knew, remember, he knew that with Samuel. And, and that was the, the message that Samuel had been given. His first prophetic pronouncement was to Eli. Your family is cursed. How can you finish it? Phineas is going to die. It's a terrible thing that's going to happen to you two generations. And, and, and Eli knows that this is true. This is true. Now Israel, 30,000 people. 
died. The Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, verse 10. And they fled every man into his tents. And there was a very great slaughter for the, for the fellow Israelites, 30,000 footmen. They run home. They run home to Mama. Mama, maybe Mama can help them. Because God's not going to help them. Because their hearts weren't right. And the ark of God was taken. Can you imagine? The ark. The ark that, uh, that, that a million Israelites followed around the city of Jericho with the, the seven priests and the, and the ark of the, of the covenant being carried around. The ark was taken and brought to, uh, to, the, to, 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 the, to, the, to the Philistine, Philistine cities. To, actually, to, the, to Dagon, to, to their God. That's next week, I'll tell you about that. And, uh, but actually, they're, they're captured. And so, verse 14, Eli hears the news. 15, he's 98, he dies. Hoppy and Phineas are dead. Verse 17, the king to pass and made mention of the ark of God that fell from his seat back and by the side of the gate neck break, and he died. My, my, uh, my birthday was yesterday, and my, my kids came over to see me. I met my, my daughter, one of the ministers, she said something about my legacy, you know, something, your, your legacy, Dad. And I don't know what we're talking about, but you mentioned legacy, you know. Well, just think about Hoffman and Phineas. Uh, what legacy did they have? And, and poor Eli, he had served for 40 years uh, in, 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 as, as high priest and judge of Israel, and, and, and now the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant, the very center of the, of the worship of God, where his presence was, the people were supposed to come and, 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 and worship, in, worship there because his presence was there and offer sacrifices because his presence was there, is taken by the Philistines. And he knows, he knows, he knows that it's because of the sin that he is allowed to be committed in the very presence of God in, in, in the very uh, temple of God in Shiloh, he has allowed it, he's allowed his own sons to participate in this. Oh, don't do that, you shouldn't do that. But he, he didn't stop it. He knows he's failed. That's why he dies. This is a sad, sad thing. Sad, sad story. And it's, it, it's a story that was repeated in Israel over and over. Something like it, not as severe as this. There's no man that's going to make the ark of God great again. It, it is to, America has to turn to God and give God His glory. His glory. Get, give God His place. And then, then, America will be great again. And we won't do it. God will do it. If we are totally committed people, if we truly are the Christian nation that God means for us to be, that's where it is. That's where it is. Right now, we're saying, oh no, what are we going to the future is, is dull because the glory of God will be taken from us. I, I really believe that we're a blessed nation. There's two nations that, that serve God, that, that say that they are a nation under God, Israel and the United States. And I don't want the glory of God to lift from us. Let us, let us say, right, stop right here, that we will pray for America. That we'll pray for our own lives to be holy. That we will pray for our families, that they will be separated and holy, our sons, our daughters, that, that they will turn back to God. And, and then, and then uh, that, uh, that, that, that our church will be fully committed to God and that we watch it fill up with committed people for Christ. And, and, that, our, and that our nation will once again Turn back to God with churches that are full and homes that are full, people, uh, 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 parents that are, are dedicated to raising godly children, not worldly children. That's what they want right now. Most children, you know what parents, they're raising their kids now to be successful. They want them to be lawyers, judges, doctors, politicians, to be successful. I, I want that too. But first, Raise our children to be godly. To put God on the throne so that they can have the kind of home that we want, a godly home. To marry someone of like faith and dedication of themselves. You know? And establish another Christian home and another Christian home and another Christian home. That's what makes America great. That's what we need today. Oh, Lord, correct our thinking.
God in heaven, we thank you and we praise you for your presence, your power, your might. Lord, may your glory remain in America and shine your light to the world. I know that's what you want for us. We send missionaries all over the world out of this country, Lord. Let your glory shine from our homes and, and from our villages and from our churches and shine out bright and clear to all the world, just as Israel was supposed to do, to be a, a guiding light to Christ and salvation. Make of us a glorious nation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, um, Israel probably thought all was lost. Eli is dead. Hoppy and Phineas are dead. We've lost thousands of, uh, of soldiers. We're defeated by the Philistines. They've taken the, the Ark of the Covenant. Can you imagine the fear and the dread and the, and, 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 and the depression that they felt at that time? But God, God, he, he was still on his throne. He had already appointed Samuel to be the judge. A righteous judge was already serving in the land. He also, he also uh, uh, knew what he was going to do to bring the ark back to the people. God wanted the hearts of the people. And he would go to great lengths but he was never knocked off his throne. You can take the ark, but you can't knock God off his throne. He is victorious, victorious. God will be victorious, remember that. God is in our land. God has us in his hand. Father in heaven, again, we thank you. We thank you for your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go peace.